Well, hey there. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. I'm back today with a new kayak from Stellar Kayaks, their new three-piece S14 G2 that packs up. It's only 40 pounds, and it fits in the back of my Subaru. Let's check it out. Stellar Kayaks has been involved in a lot of really innovative boat designs, but I think this new S14 G2 takes the cake. It weighs about 40 pounds, at least in the Advantage layup, and it fits right in the back of my Subaru. I just flip the back seats down, all my gear, and away we go. So we made it down to the water here at Kutra's Pond, my normal demo spot, and I'm gonna take a minute and set this thing up. I'm gonna time myself to give you guys an idea of how long it takes to go from bag to boat. Even with my little mistakes, it only took me like nine minutes to set this thing up. Uh, I think if I got efficient at that and got my little system dialed in, I could probably do that in five minutes. I mean, it's six wing nuts that were all really easy to start. I can't say enough about it, that was really easy. And then now that I have it done, it looks, it feels just like a regular kayak. There's no flex in these joints whatsoever. It feels like a one piece. I've had a lot of people asking me like, is this gonna be stout? Is this tested? How did they come up with this idea? This is not a new system. This is the same system they use on eight man rowing shells. So Stellar is owned by a company called Flying Eagle that also makes WinTech rowing shells. And their big 40 foot eight man boats all come apart in the middle with the same exact system. So they knew that they could take this system and put it on a small 14 foot boat that's only holding one person and it's gonna be plenty strong. But enough talking about it, let's go hit the water. We're gonna test it out. I'm gonna tell you how it feels and see if I notice anything different compared to the standard Stellar S14. So I guess while we have it on shore, I could give you guys a quick walk through the boat. When you have it on the stands, it's hard to even know that that's a three piece. Unless you get really close, you see just the slightest little line there. When I was putting it together, it's got a couple of like male, female pieces that kind of slide together to help you get it lined up and help you get the thread started. I made it really easy to put it together. I'll open the hatch here so you can see inside. You see the carbon fiber bulkhead and then wing nuts. You got three on the bottom, three on the top. Cockpit wise, exactly identical. It's got the padded floor, smart track rudder foot pedals. Again, I mentioned it's all pre-plumbed. If you wanted to add a rudder, you can definitely do that. Standard stellar seat. This back band is adjustable forward and backwards. And they also have a clam style seat if you wanted to get some more back support they have an option for that here you'll notice in the back there's a seam right there along the paddle stager that's where the bulkhead goes the skeg got moved to the back we'll see how easy that is to reach from the water but i don't expect that to be a problem at all and again rudder ready all back here is ready to go you can toss the rudder on there in two minutes I swear you guys, everywhere I go, there's a leaf blower. So if you can't hear me, I apologize. I'm here in Reading today down at Kutra's Pond, which has sort of been my local close to home hangout. Oh, that water is so cold. It's actually January, but Reading tends to be pretty nice in the winter if you catch it between storms, which we are. So it's almost 60 degrees out today, so not too bad. I know it's been my first video in a while. I kind of, I decided this winter to take some time off. I took December off and January off from the YouTube channel. Um, I didn't intend to take two months off, but I kind of just enjoyed the downtime so much that I, uh, I just took it off. I did a lot of different stuff. I did a lot of mountain biking. I did a little bit of paddling, uh, just a lot of volunteering in my community. There's a local trail organization that I've been spending a lot of time with, digging trails, hanging out in the woods. So really enjoyed the downtime. <sighs> but man, does it feel good to be back in the boat. It's my second day on the row paddling. And another thing you might notice difference is I got a new paddle. Shout out to the guys at Alder Creek Canoe and Kayak in Portland. I saw this paddle in their shop and I was totally geeked out on it. It's a Gear Labs Kalik. Oh man, I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering that. I've been looking for a Carbon Greenland paddle. They were nice enough to hook me up, so I told them I would talk about it here on the channel, review it for you guys after I spent some time in it. It's only my second paddle with it, but man, so far, I'm loving it. It's incredibly light, incredibly efficient, stiff, easy to move through my hands. 
It's got a really nice tapered loom, not a heavy duty shoulder here. Uh, I like that. I like the ability to like move the paddle in my hands, especially for Greenland paddling. It's nice to be able to like lean your boat over, do some sculling, get down in the water. And if you're not familiar with Greenland paddling, I'm going to try to do a video specifically about it because it does have a place in paddle sports and it doesn't get talked about near enough. People always want to know like, how can a paddle this small provide the power you need to move a kayak through the water? But I'm here to tell you it does. It's crazy efficient. And uh, I think if you try it, you really like it. It's just a different style of paddling altogether. When I was coming up, I spent a lot of time learning Greenland rolls. In fact, I'll drop in like some old school OG Headwaters content from about 15 years ago right now. So this video takes me back to like 2010, right when I opened up the kayak store. My buddy Mark made this carbon Greenland paddle, which really wasn't a thing at the time. He just kind of did a custom one-off from a wood plug. Anyway, he gave it to me to go test it out, and so I had a buddy film this from the dock. And it's kind of fun to uh, take a trip down memory lane here. But anyways, back to the boat. So I paddled across the pond, and guess what? It feels just like an S14. Uh, totally familiar. Uh, this is a boat I spent a lot of time in. Um, I've got that S14 G2 Multisport that I did a review on in the river here recently. And uh, it feels identical. This is the kind of boat that's efficient, very, very stable, strong on the secondary edge, very maneuverable. You put an edge in the water and you give it a little sweep and she wants to carve a nice turn. Uh, there's a reason the S14 G2 has been so popular. By far, Stellar's best-selling model over the past year, at least here on the West Coast through my warehouse and through my dealer network. So I'm not paddling this boat with the Skag, but I want you to notice something. If I stop paddling, it starts to kind of fall off course. The Stellar boats are definitely geared towards either a Skag or a rudder. I can paddle it fine without the Skag down, but if you want to just go straight or if you're dealing with any sort of uh, downwind conditions, you're going to want to use that Skag. And on this boat, they put the Skag right back here on that back third of the kayak. It makes the plumbing way easier. You don't have to try to fit that together. It's a little bit of a reach, but not too bad. And with the skeg down on this boat, it tracks like an arrow. Now, if you still want to have a little bit of performance, you can bring that skeg up. You can drop it down one third and have a little bit better tracking, or you can drop it down halfway. So you can really kind of tailor the maneuverability of the boat, just depending on how far down you drop that skeg. With it all the way up, it's going to be super playful, responsive to your edge, quarter of the way down, and boom, you instantly just fall back on track but yet it'll still respond to an edge turn if you want it to. And then all the way down, it just locks in. It's gonna run straight as an arrow. So very cool Skag system, very functional on this boat. Even with a boat on a heavy edge, it's not gonna go, but watch this. Put the Skag up, add a little sweep. Carves a beautiful turn. So, it's one of the cool things about this boat is it is just so versatile. It's big enough and stable enough that you can put a beginner person in and they're going to feel like they can paddle it no problem without having to fight the boat. But it's also performance oriented enough that I can get in it, play with the edges and still have a ton of fun. <laughs> and it's fast too. It's surprising how fast it is for a 14 foot boat. By comparing it to the Eddyline Equinox, you know, I know they're different styles of boats, but they're very similar in stats. This boat is more maneuverable and has a little bit better speed than the Equinox. I'd say the Equinox is a little better tracking, probably a little bit more forgiving all around. The Stellars all have a softer chime, so they want to roll to the secondary edges a little easier. But uh, you know, if you're looking at an Equinox, it's probably worth your time to check this one out too. Obviously a little bit more money. Typically Stellars are around $1,000 to $1,500 more than an Eddy line. And that's because you're getting into either fiberglass carbon fiber or carbon Kevlar um, as opposed to thermoformed ABS. I have a whole video on materials. If you're trying to understand what's right for you, go watch that video. Um, I think it's called Kayak Materials. I'll link it up here at the end. Well, just as I suspected, you don't notice this being a three piece at all. That immediately just goes out of your mind. It feels just like any other S14 G2. 
But the fact that it does pack down and fit in the back of my Subaru, and in 10 minutes, I have it set up and I'm on the water, that's pretty cool. And if I lived in an apartment, you know, the way those things, the nose packs into the cockpit and the stern each have their own bag, you could literally just slide that into a coat closet and have a kayak when you need it, and it's pretty much out of the way when you don't. So even apartment dwellers don't have to sacrifice. They can get into a high performance kayak and just have it broken down when they're not using it. Also a huge shout out to Astro. They came back on board for 2024 to sponsor the channel. They sent me a bunch of new PFDs to check out. This is the new Ringo, which was one of my favorite PFDs last year. I just got a little update. They did a black version. The pocket is slightly more robust. It has room for my phone. It's got keys on a little leash in here. And the foam of this jacket is just so soft and squishy. It just molds to your body. I completely forget you have it on. One thing that always impresses me about this 14 is just how efficient it feels. It doesn't feel like you're dragging around a slug of a kayak. Most 14 foot touring kayaks feel a little pokey, but this one, they've packed so much efficiency into the hull that it doesn't really feel, it doesn't feel held back at all. I would say it keeps up to most of my 15, 16 foot sea kayaks. It's popping out into the Sacramento River. A little bit of current out here. Hit the bottom. One thing that's cool about this Greenland paddle is check that out. They do like a plastic replaceable tip on it, which I really like. So if I'm banging the bottom like I just did, and over time, I can just replace this piece. Pretty cool. I'm definitely a huge fan of this paddle. Like I've been paddling Greenland paddles for years and I've never felt one that's so light, so buoyant, so much grip. They really did a nice job on it. Well, I think I'm gonna head back to the dock. I got a good feel of the boat. It's very familiar, um, very cool. I've been super excited about this boat. I've been posting about it online a little bit on Facebook on like Church of the Double Bladed Paddle Group, as well as the Stellar Kayak Owners Group. And I've never had a boat get so much attention. I really feel like Stellar hit the nail on the head with this three-piece kayak. It fits a need for a lot of people that aren't ready to sacrifice and get an inflatable or get a collapsible kayak. I mean, this thing packs down small, it's easy to the water, and you sacrifice nothing. I really hope Stellar expands this out to other kayaks, like the 14 low volume, or the 16, you know, 18, really any of their other kayaks. Um, I just think that it's gonna add a lot of value. If people are looking for that performance-oriented boat that packs down small, that they can fit in their car, you know, get rid of the roof racking problem, I think they really hit the nail on the head with this thing, and I think there's gonna be a lot of folks so you're gonna be jazzed on this kayak. Now, this isn't necessarily a new idea. I know somebody in the comments will be like, wait a second, Valley Kayaks has been doing that since the 80s. You're right, Nigel Dennis kayaks, all of them have done three-piece expedition kayaks, but it's never been done on a small boat. It's never been such a clean and easy kit, the way they fit together. And it's never been marketed as such. You know, those kayaks were always super heavy and geared toward big expeditions. This kayak is just your mom and pa, lightweight, easy recreational touring kayak and it packs down so incredibly small but it's not just the kayak it's the whole package it's the covers how they fit together how easily it screws together it's just all super duper clean god i could paddle this. i could do this all day between the efficiency of this hole and this ultralight paddle i feel like i could just keep this up all day long we're curious to see what our average speed was got an hour paddle I'm gonna guess like three and a half, 3.75. You guys wanna guess, leave it in the comments. Let's, let's find out. Okay. Ooh, a little slower than I thought, 3.45. I said 3.75, closer to three and a half. Probably because I spent some time talking. I also spent a little time going up river, so not too bad. This is one thing I love about a Stellar, the one hand pickup. One hand in the cockpit, away we go. All right. Overall feedback is it's awesome. It feels just like an S14 G2, which is a great boat that I've highly recommended for years now. Um, I like how they did the skeg behind the, the seat. You know, it wasn't too hard to deal with. And it's just a really nice skeg system. If you want a little bit of tracking, you can put it down just a little bit. And you can really dial it in for how you want it. If you're going downwind, you can drop it all the way. And you got this huge fin. But I find myself just paddling with it about that far down. 
It still maintains a bit of maneuverability, but it also has great tracking. As far as the three-piece option, I didn't notice any flex whatsoever, you guys. I was edging it all around, sweeping it around. I couldn't feel any bit different compared to a standard G2. Now let's open the hatches and see how watertight things were. Yep, you know, we do have a little bit of water in there. I would say after an hour of paddle, I don't know, um, maybe a quarter cup. Yeah, maybe a sponge full, if that. Let's check the back hatch. Back hatch, uh, back hatch, uh, maybe a splash. Yeah, there's a little splash. So one of my biggest concerns is like, oh, with these fittings, how watertight is that actually? And I'm wondering, like, could I tighten it down to get it more watertight? Like this one, I could get a couple more turns on here. Um, who knows? I definitely could have tightened them all down a little bit more. Maybe they loosened up just from me messing with it. But in an hour long paddle to get a quarter cup of water that's just a sponge full, that's not bad. If you're gonna be putting stuff in the hatches, you definitely wanna put them in a dry bag anyways. And again, Stella recommends you putting Vaseline on them. They say that will make it 100% watertight. So it's all really high tolerances. Um, but if you're worried about it, a little bit of Vaseline will do the trick. But ultimately, I'm really stoked about it. I love the fact that it just slides right in the back of my car. These guys over here, there's an RV park. Think about an RV. You could just shove it inside while you travel, put it on stands when you get to where you want to go. Pretty cool boat. If you guys have any more detailed questions about the S14, go ahead and leave those for me down in the comment. I will be watching this thread and I'm more than happy to provide feedback or answer any more questions you have. Or if nothing else, I'll steer you in the right direction. Thanks so much for hanging with me today. And until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.